right side, non-multi-threaded, 20 FPS, left side, maintaining, uh, I did hit 27, 28 FPS, so I think my performance test can still kill even the multi-threaded version of DCS World, but things are only going to get better. This is fantastic news. Hey guys, Plasma1945 here. We're going to jump right into it. We're going to do a side-by-side -side run of the pre and post update. No multi-threading versus multi-threading. What is multi-threading? Multi-threading is when more of your CPU gets used more efficiently. The settings are on the screen. This is a VR test, 4090 Reverb G2. Pixel density resolution is set to, uh, to 1.0 and the VR settings are 150% upscaling. So this is close to the Vario setting for the resolution in the Steam VR option. All right, on the right side, we have the non-multi-threaded on the left side, we have the multi-threaded version. Keep in mind, because this is open beta, we are having some problems with uh, FPS VR app, which seems to crash if it's running. So I just pulled up my processor monitor here on the screen. Now we can still compare some of the numbers. On the right side, as you can see, with the first arrow that's to the top is showing that only four cores are active and our FPS is around 40, 42 FPS. Left side, our FPS is up in the 60s and 70s and many more of our CPU cores are active. As you can see here, it's not just the last four cores, but the other cores like the first one, the seventh one or the ninth one, they're all being much more activated. And this is a pretty big deal, guys, because as you can see in the older on the right side, only the last three cores have any of those little green bars, which means that the load is being distributed across more processors. And as a result, we are seeing a steady 30 to 20% uplift in VR. And VR is very tasking. So this is a big deal. In the middle, I put up a graph of how DCS looked before the multi-threading update. So as you can see, the bottom four cores have those spikes in the picture in the center, but the cores up top, the other cores on my 10700K, they were doing nothing. So there's like 12 cores just kind of chilling. Now, as you can see, much more of them is being used and that's being converted into direct performance improvements. So how much of a performance improvement are we seeing? With the settings being identical, there is, I would say, a doubling or not quite doubling, but pretty close to doubling in VR. And these are fairly significant VR settings uh, because we are running at about 150% Steam VR resolution, although our pixel, pixel, uh, pixel density is 1.0, making this video on the fly just to let you guys know what's going on here. Uh, so definite improvements, yes. Here's where it gets a little taxing. You're gonna see the graphs go up really crazy here on the right side. You're gonna get a lot of red spikes. That is because there's going to be MLRS launches happening. Now, I think the improvements are significant, but there's still more work to be done like with the munitions going off. Because as soon as you see those red bars kicking in, our FPS on the right side will start to drop down to maybe 30, I think, FPS. On the left side, though, it also starts to tank a little bit, but not as bad. We're going to see it even more on the Tomcat flyby of this map. And that's where you'll actually see much more of a hit. But overall, we are seeing a doubling of the FPS in a flanker flying low with a whole bunch of stuff happening on the map pretty amazing pretty significant keep in mind guys that this is an open beta multi-threading is extremely hard to code so you may have crashes you may have some apps that will not start up or may have a conflict with dcs so keep all that in mind all right in the tomcat jumping into the rio seat i'm gonna let iceman drive me around first things first we are seeing much higher stability in our fps on the right side, as you can see, there's a lot of stuttering happening. And our FPS is in the 20s and 30s at these high settings. But on the left side, we are looking at 40s and 50s in the FPS. So we've gained at least 20 FPS. Not quite double, but that's fairly significant. The other thing that I noticed is the video card gets a lot more use. So whatever uh, bottlenecking was happening between the game and the video card, that is gone. The video card was being used before at about 
50 to 60 percent on the 4090 well now it's hitting 70 75 percent so make sure you turn your fans up if you're going to be running the multi-thread version of dcs again lots of red spikes lots of instability in the non-multi-threaded older version on the right side as well and well honestly it's going back to those graphs look at on the right side cpu 0 through 15 there's the four cores working really hard on the left side i think almost all cores maybe except for the cores five through eight those seems to be chilling but all the other cores are definitely way busier now what we're going to see is we're going to see this kind of play through all the way throughout the test but there is going to be one catch at a certain point when the mlrs launches are going to happen in about uh, 30 seconds we will see a little bit of tanking on both sides and i think this is just the nature of having to calculate individual warheads within the munitions going off that would be the consequence of that also this is a pretty busy map i think i've got like seven or eight sam installations i've got spitfires and mustangs flying around being shot at by s 300s and sa 15s so it's it is a very busy map this is the closest that i could recreate to a server such as growling sidewinder when it's fully loaded for pvp or enigma's cold war when it is fully loaded so here if we are seeing there there go there's the mlrs is flying over top and the right side is really going to tank and the left is going to take a little hit but not as bad so right side we're at 30 34 fps before they land left side we're at about 60 fps so there's already a doubling there and as soon as these mlrs start detonating on the ground we're going to start taking even bigger hits and they're yeah i think they're going to start impacting now so just watch the right side the fps starts to drop into the 20s 25 24 23 left side it is taking some hits but it's maintaining 30 to about 45, 50 FPS. So it's definitely handling it a lot better. Right side, non-multi-threaded, 20 FPS. Left side, maintaining, uh, I did hit 27, 28 FPS. So I think my performance test can still kill even the multi-threaded version of DCS World. But things are only gonna get better. This is fantastic news. Nobody creates silly maps like I do. I've just pushed it too far, too hard, but darn, this is great news, and I'm very happy to see this come through. Guys, make sure that you go to Eagle Dynamics. There's a bugs reporting form, and I'll put out a video on how to set it up as well to make sure you can run multi-threaded.